بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركات الله says in the Quran in Surah Zukhruf Ayah 61 إنه لعلم للساعة and Isa السلام verily Isa السلام is the knowledge of the hour what are the problems with this ayah are there really any problems with this are there really any problems with the qira'ah of the word ilm Sheikh Imran Hussain certainly thinks so so let's talk about that for a minute in today's podcast join me before i begin let me say this sheikh imran hussain is my elder and again i'm going to uh, engage with uh, his adilla and baraheen about this aya respectfully inshallah it's not a matter of life and death it's not a matter of kufr or, or iman not at least according to me and you know i'm not much for takfir i do bring evidence from the ulama from the muhaqqiqin if they have labeled a firqa or a sect as kufriya then i'll quote that but personally i'm not much for takfir or anything i think everyone has a right to hold an opinion it's between them and god ultimately and allah alone is the better judge but of course if somebody is uh, a deviant in 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 a, in some regard then we need to point that out respectfully and uh sheikh imran hussain is a very intelligent guy I, i don't know him personally i don't know much about him i haven't read all of his books or watched all of his video lectures on youtube but i have watched some of these lectures and i have read some parts of his books especially the book that i'm referring to today is akhir az zama in which he lays out his uh, complete uh, muqaddama for for this ayah now again i want to reiterate this i'm going to defer with him respectfully uh, i'm indifferent to the major part of his discourse that is available on the internet which is uh, dealing with eschatology malahim and eschatology is not my field <laughs> saying that i'm not expert in it it's it, is a is a um uh you know it's it's not even true uh, what to talk about expertise i i don't even know little bit about malahim or or uh, or eschatology and so um um yeah i i am indifferent to that part of his discourse which is available on the internet i don't want to go there i don't want to talk about it i don't really know much about it it's all well and good um we all know that there is ghath and thameen in malahim there's lots of inauthentic riwayat when it comes to eschatology um but you know um, i don't want to talk about it i'm indifferent to it i haven't looked into it so let that be let that be just let it be but qiraat is my field it's not my academic field i don't have a degree in qiraat uh but i have studied qiraat all my life and so i know a little bit about it i'm a student a humble student of ilm al qiraat and so i'm going to engage with this part of sheikh imran hussain's discourse which uh, specifically takes up this issue of qiraat in the word al ilm in this ayah innahu al ilm al saa and we're inshallah going to look at it uh, in today's pos- podcast not in 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 uh, much detail this is going to be a short podcast inshallah and this is going to be not very academic or scholarly uh, i have not written about this i don't have a research paper on this maybe in future you know writing a research paper is a massive task really people think it's easy but uh, it's not it's a, it's a huge task to take up maybe i'll take up this task and maybe write about this as well but i haven't written about this but i have written about qiraat my research paper on ghamdi's variant reading essay is available uh, as a preprint through my website and you should download it and look at it because a lot what i'm going to say today what i'm going to talk about right now you will find references for it for a lot of it 
in that research paper. And so I'm not going to go to references and make this lengthier than it needs to be. You can look that up. Um, so inshallah, let's begin. Let's first of all begin by looking at the ayah itself. And so let's go to Surah Zukhruf. And this is ayah 61. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ فَلَا تَمْتَرُنَّ بِهَا وَاتَّبِعُونَ هَذَا سِرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ This is the word لَعِلْمٌ Surely he is a knowledge لِلسَّاعَةِ For the hour And this is for me, this is ayah muhkam This is not from متشابهات القرآن The words are in lucid Arabic language, the nahav, the grammatical structure, tells me that la ilmu means that he is the knowledge for the hour, and it does not in any way, shape, or form uh, denotes to the to to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam having the knowledge of the hour. Because when Allah says that Allah alone has the knowledge of the hour, He says, عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ And with Allah is the knowledge of the hour. There is no word عِنْدَهُ in this sentence, in this ayah. Nowhere it says that Isa salam has the knowledge of the hour. He is the knowledge for the hour. عِلْمٌ لِسَّاعَةِ There is a lamb. لِسَّاعَةِ he is the knowledge for the hour. Does not mean that he has the knowledge of the hour. So there is no contradiction. But um, let's, let's go deeper into this. Yeah. Let us look at what Sheikh Imran Hussain talks about in his book. This is from page 150 of his book, The Messiah, The Quran, and The Akhir Zaman. And he says, وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ فَلَا تَمْتَرُنَّ بِهَا وَاتَّبِعُونَ هَذَا سِرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ Now I should point out here that this reading of the word لَعَلَمٌ is basically a shaz qira'ah. If we go to, for example, let's go to an Quran. And Quran is a website which lists all the qiraat of the Quran. Um, not going to show you a PDF of the uh, um, qiraat al Ashr Quran. Let's go to this website so you can also go there and see for yourself and search for yourself. Now, this is Innahu la ilmun lissa'ah. This is Surah Zukhruf, ayah 61. And if we choose any riwayah, let's, let's choose Hafsan Asim. You see, this is Hafsan Asim, La Ilmul Lissa'ah. Let's choose, for example, Qalun An Nafi' Innahu La Ilmul Lissa'ah. This site will render any differences between the Qur'an in the red. So you can see this is red, this is red, this is red. But La Ilmul Lissa'ah stays the same across all riwayat. Hisham, Ibn Thakwan, Khalad and Hamza. I hope this is clear for everyone. I don't need to dwell in this more than it is necessary to. So all the ten Qurra, the Qurra al Ashr, are unanimous on this word. Uh, the reading of this word as Ilmun Lissa. So anything other than Ilmun Lissa is Shaza, is Shaza Qiraat. Qiraat, and we cannot deem that Qur'an. We cannot read it as Qur'an. If we read it in Salah, if we read La Alamun Lissah, our Salah will not be uh, performed. And so we'll have to redo the Salah. We cannot read any other word than Ilmun Lissah as the Qur'an. Please understand this. In Qiraat Al Ashr, there is a consensus between all the Qurra, all the Ruwat, all the Turuq on this word being Ilmun Lissa'ah. Now where do, they, where do we get Alamun Lissa'ah from? Where do we get it from? Let's go to for example the Tafasir now. And let's look at 
الطبري استفسير and uh, well Tabari says Haddathna Abu Kurayb Qalathana Ibn Atiyya An Fudayl bin Marzuq An Jabir Qal Kana Ibn Abbas Yaqul Ma Adri Ilmu Nas Bitafsir Hadil Ayah Wa Innahu La Alamu Lissah So this is the Qira'ah of Ibn Abbas Also of uh, Abi Hurairah حدثني محمد بن سعد قال ثنا أبي قال ثنا عم أبي قال ثنا عمي قال ثنا أبي عن أبيه عن ابن عباس وإنه لعلم للساعة نزول عيسى بن مريم. so we get this قراءة from ابن عباس. let's for example um, Look at Sayyuti. Sayyuti, Imam Sayyuti, he is listing Ilmun Lissa, Ilmun Lissa, Ilmun Lissa from so many people that even if you look at the exegesis, even if you look at the exegesis of this ayah, you find that overwhelming rivayat are about this word being Ilmun Lissa, not Alam. Ilm, knowledge for the hour. So, the the uh, the qira'ah that Sheikh Imran Hussein is referring to is a shad qira'ah. The other qira'ah, ilmul lissa, is mutawatir. It's mutawatirah by the collaboration of the ten qurra. All right. So we have established this. Now, he says. Diacritical marks in the Arabic text of the Quran. We must now address the subject of diacritical marks in the Arabic text of the Quran which determine how a word should be pronounced. The same word pronounced differently can have completely different meanings. The early copies of the Quran had no diacritical marks since the Arab reader did not need them. Human beings inserted the present diacritical marks long after the Quran was revealed. Human beings inserted the present diacritical marks long after the Quran was revealed. They did so because of the very large numbers of non-Arabic speaking people who eventually entered the community who followed Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and who needed those marks to assist them in reciting the Quran. Only an ignorant person would declare that diacritical marks inserted by human beings form a part of the divinely revealed Quran and hence divinely protected most copies of the written Quran have preserved diacritical marks inserted in such a way as to render the word Ain la meme in the verse above a Zukhruf 4361 as Ilm rather than Alam the Arabic text can be written either as Innahu la'alamun lissah wa innahu la'ilmun lissah. It should be quite clear that the diacritical marks inserted in the second text which have resulted in the Quran declaring that he is the knowledge of the hour are invalid. Since the Quran has declared that the knowledge of the last hour is with Allah and Allah alone, hence no one can be or can have the knowledge of the last hour. What can it possibly mean that Jesus is the knowledge of the hour? How can he be the knowledge of the hour unless he has the knowledge of the hour? How can he have the knowledge of the hour when that knowledge is with Allah alone and with no one else? If the verse is read as he is the knowledge of the hour, it would qualify as either senseless or dangerously and recklessly ambiguous and such language cannot be attributed to Allah most wise. The correct pronounce pronouncement of the word with different diacritical marks would result in the verse being read as he is the sign of of the last hour and that makes complete sense if Jesus is himself the sign par excellence of the last hour then we need to locate the sign connected with Jesus al-Islam which qualifies as a sign par, ex par excellence of the last hour while all the miracles connected with Jesus were meant to provi provide proof to the Israelite people that he was indeed the Messiah none of them can be clearly recognized as a sign of the last hour and so on and so forth and he goes on um uh, Now let's go back and critically analyze this. 
the first thing is when he's talking about the diacritical marks. Now, I have said this before, if you guys have followed my other videos, I have made this clear times and again. Uh, when I was talking about the um, Ramadi, uh, when I was talking about Ramadi Sahab's issue with, with the Qira'at, and I have made it clear that Qira'ah and Quran are two different terms. First of all, let's address this question of the Qira'ah and the Qur'an. When we say Qur'an, what do we mean exactly? We mean Kalamullah. How? Does Allah speak in the way you and me, we, speak, we are speaking? The way I'm talking, the, does Allah talk like this? Does Allah talk and say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen? What does it mean, Kalamullah? But we don't know exactly. I mean, there are Da'if riwayats. I don't know how authentic they are, but there are Ta'if riwayat. I think these are these riwayat are uh, Ta'if that when Allah willed to reveal the Quran or a portion of His kalam to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, He directly spoke to Jibril alayhi salatu wasallam. And Jibril, when he was taking this revelation to our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the other malaika would stop him and say. What did Allah tell you? And Jibreel alayhi salam would say, Al-Haqq. And Allah has spoken the truth. And all the malaika would say, Al-Haqq, Al-Haqq, Al-Haqq. And then Jibreel alayhi salam would take this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But I have not met a single person in my life, in my whole life. And I have asked this to my teachers, to Asatiza, to the Allam, to the knowledgeables, to the, to the scholars, to the research scholars, to the scholars, to teachers, I have asked this question. Nobody can say for sure that they know what was the exact schematic of that revelation. How it was brought to the Prophet ﷺ. Were these the same words that Jibreel salam told the Prophet ﷺ? Or like Allah says in the Quran that he has bestowed this upon the qalb of the Prophet, the heart of the Prophet, was, uh, were these words um, by the um, intuitive, intellectual, um, let's say, understanding of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and he uttered these words, made it into these words, or were these the exact words that Jibreel alayhi salam recited upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Now that is Qareen al-Qiyas. Uh, the Jamhur, the ulama have a consensus that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam read these words to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa exactly verbatim in seven ahruf. Otherwise, the hadith in which uh, our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asks the Jibril uh, asks Jibril alayhi salam to go back to Allah and bring more ahruf. That that hadith wouldn't make any sense unless he was reading the exact same words to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But still, we cannot sh say it with one hundred percent authority and authenticity. We can't. Iqra. What does it mean when? Jibreel alayhi salam says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the authority of Allah from Allah Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil qalam allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam Iqra what? Read what? We don't know We don't know the exact schematics of it what we know exactly, empirically, scientifically, and what we can prove is that this is from the Famin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a qira'ah. This is a reading. These are vocal renderings from the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the blessed mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his shafatain, from his lips. And this is the way he has taught the Sahaba. This is the way they taught the Tabi'een. This is the way the Tabi'een taught the Tabi'een. 
and so on and so forth. This is the empirical evidence that we have. So this is the qira'ah is always the asl. The asl. The asl is the qira'ah, is the oral, is the vocal rendering, is the vocal transmission. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the katibin ul wahyi, the scribers, to write it down, what was being done? They were listening to the qira'ah of the Qur'an. Please understand this. I am astonished, really, at people who don't understand this. This is not even something very hard to understand. This is not something academic that I'm discussing with you. This is not something at the advanced level of scholarship that I'm discussing with you. It's a simple thing to understand. It's like an A, B, C. Min famin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What were the scribes doing? They were listening to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and writing it down. The way he taught one Sahabi, the way he taught the other Sahabi, it was mukhtalif, it was different. In al Qur'ana unzil ala sabata ahrufin faqra'u ma tayassara minhu. The mutawatir hadith of Umar and Hisham bin, ha bin Hakim tells us clearly that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was teaching each of the Sahaba different lahjats according to different ahruf. Hakaza Unzilat, he listened to Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala on his recitation, listened to Hisham, uh, Hisham al Hakim's recitation, and said to both, Hakaza Unzilat, this is how it is revealed in seven ahruf, in al Qur'ana Unzila ala sabat ahruf in fakrauma tayassara minhu. The Qur'an has been revealed on seven ahruf. Read whichever is easy for you. So the khiyar, the hukm of the khiyar is by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْهُ أَيْ فَخَيِّرُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ لَكُمْ Right? اُخْتَارُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ لَكُمْ Do the khiyar, whichever is um, closer to your aptitude, whichever you feel is uh, easier for you to recite, recite, recite upon, upon that harf. Right? Now, I don't know whether you guys have heard about Ahmad al Jallad or not. Ahmad al Jallad, in recent times, he, the guy has done excellent work on Sephiotic scripts. And so, there is proof, there is scientific proof that at least Ijam, and I'll come to that in a minute, Ijam existed before the Prophet. Some say thousand years before the uh, coming of the Prophet ﷺ, some say 500, 800 years, 200 years. But we have evidence that at least I'ajam and some form of tashkil, Arab, existed before the Prophet ﷺ. But these are not present in Masahif al-Sahaba. And so, what does it mean? Were they reading according to their istihad or were they reading according to what the Prophet ﷺ taught them? Of course they were reading the way the Prophet had taught them ﷺ. Where, the, uh, where does istihad enter into this? And then the Imam, like I said just a minute ago and you guys should search Ahmad al-Jallad on the internet, watches some of the videos in which he lays uh, down his theories. He also has some excellent um, research work done on this subject, scholarly work. Um, the Arab were there, but Uthman ta'ala who did not put it in Imam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did not put it in his mushaf. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not put it in his mushaf. Al-Imam. And if you go to Al-Intisar by Qadi Abu Bakr, he tells you why. Why Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not put the diacritical marks in there. Because he wanted to preserve the ahruf of Arda al-Akhira. Right? So it's a multiformic text that could be read according to the Ahruf. 
the, some of the ahruf were abrogated in Arda al Akhira, some of the ayat were abrogated, some of the ahruf was, were abrogated. The abrogation really happened in Arda al Akhira. And what remained the final authentic uh, shape and form of the Quran was preserved by Abu Bakr and by Uthman. So, when we talk about the diacritical marks, really, you see, there are two things. There is ajam and there is uh, tashkil. Ajam is consonantal pointing and uh, tashkil is the supplementary diacritics, the fatha, dhamma, kasra. The ajam existed long before and in the Kufi script we have red dots and green dots and yellow dots and Yasin the two. Um, Professor Yasin the two, I, ho I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, has done some excellent work on these dots. He has these research papers. You can't access them if you're not a PhD student or a PhD scholar. But uh, you should look it up on the internet. He's done some excellent work uh, on the uh, red dots and yellow dots and green dots in the, uh, and blue dots in the, um, in the Kufan script. And so those were there. Those were there since the beginning. And that was really Abu al-Aswad system. The system that we have today of diacritical marks is based on Al-Farahidi's uh, scholarship. The Tashkil, the Arab, the Fatha, Dhamma, Kasara, the Tanween, all those things. These are based off of Al-Farahidi's system. And so, these diacritical marks, when you put them on the text, you make it a fixed text. It could be read then only one way. It is no more the multiformic text <coughs> of the Uthmanic Codex, the Imam. Are you guys with me? The original Codex that Uthman anhu brought the Ummah upon, has a multiformic skeletal text which could be read with you you are able to read that text upon the ahruf in different qiraat qiraat are based off of the ahruf right there's a difference between ahruf and qiraat qiraat are derived from the ahruf so um, that is a multiformic text which could be read in different variant readings. When you put diacritical marks on it, you are turning it into a fixed reading according to one rivaya. Where is the ijtihad in it? When you say, when Sheikh Imran Hussain says, Only an ignorant person would declare that diacritical marks inserted by human beings form a part of the divinely revealed Quran and are hence divinely protected. Sheikh, with all due respect, you are the ignorant one here. You have, I mean, from these lines, I gather you have absolutely no idea about Ilm al Qiraat. Absolutely none. You are an ultra crepidarian talking about this field. A sheer ultra crepidarian. Sheer ultra crepidarian. These diacritical marks are put according to a rivaya. For example, if you pick up today's Quran and you read Maliki Yawmiddin, that is Hafsan Asim. If you read Maliki Yawmiddin, these are diacritical marks. These are different in different editions of the Quran. When you go to Susi or Duri, in Susi's uh, Quran, when I say Susi's Quran, I mean the Quran, the fixed Quran, the fixed text of the Quran according to the Rivayah of Susi. When you go to that Quran, you'll find the diacritical marks differ. When you go to Khalaf and Hamza, the diacritical marks are different. Like I showed you, like for example, let's go back to N Quran. You see here? Let's, uh, let us, for example, yeah, check this out, you, you see this wow, you see this yeh, lakumu jitku, jitkumu, lakumu rabbukumu, right, the diacritical marks are different, 
Let's go to Qalun for example. Lakumu, jitukumu, so on and so forth. This is a fixed text. This text is fixed according to the reading of Qalun and Nafia. Where is the ishtihad in there? Are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell us, Ya Sheikh, with all due respect? Now, this is the picture that I get from your wordings that these were put in by the um, by the human beings through istihad. When you say through istihad, this is istihad of the ulama. This is the picture that comes to my mind. You know, people with big, big bellies, long beards, the ulama, the so-called mufti, the ulama, the, the so-called people employed by the government, sitting on a, around a table eating, right? Aishaya or Dhuhran or whatever. And they are eating the chicken, devouring the chicken and drinking whatever they have to drink. And saying, oh, so this word in the Quran, Alif, Lam, and then noon, Alif, Seen, Anas, the we read it as Anasi, Malikin Nasi. For example, this word, they're looking at it and they're saying, and one of them says, Oh, this looks like Al Bas. Hmm? And the other one, the other Alim, he picks up a drumstick and eats it, and while eating it, Am, Nam, 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 oh, no, 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 this does not look like Al Bas. Nam, Nam, Nam. Um, nom, 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 nom. No, this looks like a nas. The other one says, okay, okay, okay. If you feel this is a nas, let's put the dots there. Let's put the Arab there. Let's make it Malik in Nasi. Is this what you're trying to tell us? This is the ishtihad that ulama did with the words of the Quran. And this is, you know, their uh, ishtihadi mahna, their ishtihadi um, strife, struggle. Is this what you're trying to tell us, Ya Sheikh? With all due respect, isn't this ridiculous? This is beyond ridiculous. Each and every Allah says in the Quran, Alayna Jamahu wa Qur'ana wa Qur'ana wa iza qara'nahu wa iza qara'nahu fattabi'a Qur'ana Allah doesn't say wa iza jama'nahu fattabi'a jam'uh No. And when we have recited it upon you in the recitations through Jibreel alayhi salam, then follow its recitals, follow its recitations. This is recitation, the vocal rendering. Are you trying to tell us that this is not preserved, is not divine? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Does that even make sense? Are you saying, Ya Shaykh, for example, let's go here. Are you saying, Wala yasuddannakumu shaytanu. This is work of a human being. If you're saying they made a mistake in la ilmul lissa, it should have been la alamul lissa, I'll turn around and say, I say they made a mistake in wala yasuddannakum. This should be la yasuddannukum. Or the way um, Abdul Fadi says in his, in his notorious book, is the Quran infallible? Perhaps you've read it or not, I don't exactly know. In which he says, In Nahadan ila Sahiran. In Nahadan ila Sahiran. He says, It should be In Nahadain ila Sahiran. Right? So if this is all a matter of ishtihad, then there are mistakes in the Quran. There are so many mistakes in the Quran, in fact. There are grammatical mistakes, there are mistakes with spellings. You know, according to this theory, what are we going to do then? If this was the work of men, and was not divine, then none of it is. Then how can we say, what is the tayakkun? What is the authority then that we have with which we can say that the rest of the Quran is the way it is? It is divine and word of Allah. We can say, somebody can turn around and say, no, there are other mistakes in the Quran. Aduvvum mubin, aduvvan mubin. Why aduvvum mubin? Why? It's Allah's word, it's Allah's expression. Just because 
We have a waswasa of shaitan in our head. Doesn't mean that the Quran is wrong. And yeah, you have never said that the Quran is wrong. You have said that its vocal renderings are not the word of Allah. Its vocal renderings are divine, ya Sheikh. Please try to understand. Maybe somebody uh, shares with you this video. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you'll ever watch it or never watch it. But at least some people who are watching this, please try to understand this. These are the vocal renderings of the Quran and these are absolutely divine. Each diacritical mark in the Quran is according to a rivayah, is according to a tariq, is according to a qira'ah. And these are all divine qira'at. These are based on the divine ahruf. And so these are divine. There is no istihad in qira'at at all. The word istihad, the concept of istihad does not enter here. There is just a concept of khiyar, which is derived from the uh, Prophet's decree himself. فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْهُ And choose whichever uh, word whichever harf you are comfortable with tayassara tayassara minu you can define tayassir also as an aptitudal um, attribute something that um, let's say appeals to your aptitude you can choose that doesn't mean it's better than the other or something that's easier for you. For example, I know many Ajamis who can't pronounce the Hamza when it comes after Lam, al ard They can't ex really pronounce it. And so there is Naql al-Hamza al al ard or Sakta al al ard It's for Taisir. But are you trying to tell us that these things are not divine, these are Ishtihad of the ulama? No. So understand this, the diacritical marks, the Tashkil, First the ajam and then the tashkil. These are both done according to the rivayat and turuq of the Quran. The vocal renderings, the qiraats. And so these are absolutely divine and absolutely authentic. Absolutely divine and absolutely authentic. Absolutely divine and absolutely authentic. Please understand this. Please do. With all due respect. So... This was the first point that he made and I have refuted this. Alhamdulillah, I have replied to it. Now when you say human beings inserted the present diacritical marks long after the Quran was revealed, he's probably is because the ajam began in the uh, period of Hazrat Ali, Karram Allah Wajhul Kareem. I'll give references later. Uh, but you can search it on the internet, you can search it and you'll find the reference. So it began in the period of uh, uh, Mawla Ali, Karram Allah Wajhul, Wajhul Kareem. Mawlana wa Mawlakum. The uh, Farahidi system came on later. But I think what he is referring to, what Sheikh Imran Hussain is referring to here, is Hajjaj bin Yusuf because a lot of riwayats um, and most of them inauthentic by the way tell us that he's the one who uh, you know fixed the Quran on one riwayah riwayah Hafs and Asim and so even what he did with the Quran was according to a riwayah was according to a riwayah riwayah of Hafs and Asim it doesn't mean he was doing it himself or that when he ordered the ulama to do it, they were doing it themselves according to their own mind, sitting, eating chicken, um, 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 okay, this should be like this, um, um, this should be, oh no, I don't think this should be like. Okay, today we are feeling uh, very joyous. Let's, let's say, let's write this as Malikim Muqtadir instead of Malikim Muqtadir. Well, I mean, it is totally ridiculous to say that this is istihad or that the ulama him, themselves had to do something with it. They're just devising a method of showing exactly how the dhamma is pronounced, the kasara and whatnot, and to distinguish the words according to these vocal renderings. They're devising a system, but all the diacritical marks are according to the rivayat, according to the turuq, according to the qiraats. Simple as that, these are all divine. Yes, these are divine. 
فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ What does this ayah mean? Okay, tell us. فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ What does it mean? Don't do ta'wil. This is a muhkam. No ta'wilat, please. Muhkam. فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ Reciting قِرَاءَةً فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ It's recitation. Please. No ta'wilat, ya sheikh. Please, you say this yourself. Don't do ta'wil in, in this ayah. So, please, you, you shouldn't do any ta'wil as well. And you should tell us what it, the ayah means then, what it is denoting to. So, each vocal rendering, the fixed text is according to a vocal rendering. So, each vocal rendering is authentic. It's from Allah, munazzal min Allah, ha kaza unzilat. Each of these renderings, each of these vocal renderings, each of the variants is munazzal min Allah. And the diacritical marks they fix the text of the Quran according to a vocal rendering please understand this I don't want to repeat myself again on this so all right let's let's proceed okay the next point he makes is about the Quran has declared that the knowledge of the last hour is with Allah sure and the who علم الساعة This is the Quran corpus and this is the word علم from the root عين لام ميم that Quran has used and Quran says in the علم الساعة sure we agree it is only with him it is only with Allah the علم الساعة the knowledge of the hour is with Allah alone yes then he says what can it possibly mean that Jesus is the knowledge of the hour? How can he be the knowledge of the hour unless he has the knowledge of the hour? Excuse me, how does it follow? Innahu la ilmu How does it follow from there that Aindahu ilmu Show us from the text. Now this is all his mind at work. This is tafsir bir ra'i al mujarrat. This is exegesis from one's own intellect alone. There is absolutely no proof for it. Is there a dalalatun nas, iqtidaun nas, isharatun nas, aibaratun nas that points towards what he is saying? Show us from the text, ya sheikh. Indulge us in hermeneutics. Show us from the nas itself how it follows from indahu, uh, from innahu la ilmun lissa'a that indahu ilmu sa'a what do you mean? How can he be the knowledge of the hour? He can be the knowledge of the hour. Listen. Indahu mafatihul ghaib, huwa miftahul ghaib. Are these the same thing? I think the ones who are not very familiar with Arabic, maybe they get confused in, in the translation because something is definitely lost in the tr uh, translation of, of the words. But the point is that uslubul Quran is unique. First da' bima tu'mar. That's not how Arabic people talk. That's not how Arabian people talk in Arabic. They say fa'fa'al bima tu'mar. So what are you going to say? First da' bima tu'mar is wrong. Or maliki yawmiddin. What does it mean maliki yawmiddin? Can you be malik of a yawm? That's not even human expression. So Allah's expression is different. That is the ajazul Quran. That is the miracle miracle of the language of the Quran of course I'm draw, drawing heavily upon the book by Dr. Ahmad Bassam Asai al Mu'ajiza, and you can look at that book and you know you'll understand what I'm saying how does it follow when you say how can he be the knowledge of the hour unless he has the knowledge of the hour that's your intellectual question I'm not interested in that how can he have the knowledge of the hour when that knowledge is with Allah? Who says he has the uh, knowledge? He is himself the knowledge. He is the knowledge of the hour. People will look at him in his second coming and know for sure that it is imminent. The hour is imminent upon them. What is the problem there? How does it follow from the ayah? Let's go to the ayah. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ And he is the knowledge of the hour where does Allah say indahu al musa how does it follow from here that indahu al musa this is waswasa of shaitan a'udhu billah 
أعوذ بالله من ذلك قل أعوذ برب الناس um, I'm, I'm just trying to remember the verse of Hannas قل أعوذ برب الناس مالك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس This is waswasa of shaitan of khannas يا شيخ This is tafsir بالرأي المجرد Show us I'm not in, We are not interested in your philosophical and intellectual uh, conundrums in what you feel, in what you think, we're not interested in that. We are interested in what the ayah is saying. Show us from the ayah, from the text itself, how can it denote to Isa alayhi salam having the knowledge of the hour? Show us, show us. Where does it say in the Hu al Musa? Where does it say he has the knowledge of the hour? How does it follow if he is the knowledge of the hour? How does it follow from there that he has the knowledge of the hour? Like I just said, if somebody is the key, does not necessarily mean that he possesses the key himself. And this could be metaphorical, this could be istiaratan, this could be kinayatan, but we're not going to go into that. This is a muhkamaya, and I agree with you, this is a muhkamaya. No ta'wil is necessary. He is the knowledge of the hour. Intahal maudu, khatam, baat khatam ho gayi, sheikh. Isme to koi. Why are we talking, even talking about this? Let, let's talk about it. If, if you want to, okay, let's talk about this. Show us. Show us from the ayah itself. How does it follow from the ayah that he is the knowledge of the hour, that he has the knowledge of the hour? This is non sequitur. Qiyas mal fariq. It doesn't follow from here. This is a logical fallacy. You get my point? This is a logical fallacy. It does not follow from he being the knowledge of the hour that he has the knowledge of the hour. Please try to understand. Show us from the ayah, from the nas itself, how it can follow from there. Otherwise, we are not interested in the wasawis of shaitan. We are not interested in what you are thinking from your intellect alone, from your mind. We are not interested in that. I reject your opinion. Because your opinion is not backed by any evidence, by any textual evidence. So this is the second point and I have replied to it, I have rebuttaled it. If there are people who want to talk to me about this more, please do in the comment section. Reach me on Facebook or talk to me in the comment section. Let's discuss this. But you need to show me, you need to show me from the um, from the text itself how you take this ayah to mean that Isa alayhi salam has the knowledge of the hour the ayah does not say this it is a muhkam ayah he is the knowledge of the hour people will look at him and they will know for sure that the hour is imminent he is the knowledge of the hour there is nothing between Isa alayhi salam's second coming and the hour of, of Qiyamah, the, 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 the last hour, the day of judgment. There is nothing in between. He is the knowledge of the hour. It's as simple as that. He is the ilmun lissa. I, I understand this. I don't know why people don't. Maybe, like I said, maybe it is the language barrier, you know. I know, alhamdulillah, I know Arabic. People who don't know Arabic uh, may get a little confused about this. But there is no need for confusion. Try to understand this simply. The text does not say that he has the knowledge of the hour at all. And it does not follow from this ayah in any way, shape or form that Isa alayhi salam has the knowledge. This is a logical fallacy. This is a logical fallacy. He can be knowledge for the hour without him having the knowledge of the hour. Where is the contradiction? Where is the contradiction? There is no logical contradiction even in that. Right? So please try to understand. 
And yeah, so this was really uh, my reply to Sheikh um, Imran Hussain. And I saw one of his videos. In, in those videos, he... Well, let's talk about that some other time. I'll play that video for you guys and then try and reply. But because there are a couple of other things that he also says in this regard, which I have not addressed because those are complete red herrings. Complete red herrings. And I'll show it to you when I'll come to that. But this was the crux of the matter. From his written word, I've shown you from his written word what he says. And I think he's made a dire mistake here. I think he's mistaken. Uh, the guy is very intelligent. He's done a lot of work, like I said, on Malahim. Uh, eschatology. Eschatology is not my field, so I don't want to talk about that. Let it be. I'm indifferent towards that content. I don't want to talk about that content of his. Um, but again, this is with respect. I'm not calling him a kafir. I don't think this is a matter of kufr or iman. Still, one should be careful because... Um, Belief in the Qiraat of the Qur'an, belief in, in the authentic Qiraat of the Qur'an is a fundamental belief. And believing that the diacritical marks are based on ijtihad is a major deviance, major deviance. And you are deviating from Sabad al-A'zam. You are deviating from Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah, but even keeping that aside, you are deviating from Sabad al-A'zam. So please understand this. These diacritical marks are divine. Also, ilmul lissa, taking it in the meaning of the sign, is based upon the Shah's Qiraat. The Qiraa Shaza that the exegetes take of Abu Huraira and Ibn Abbas, Alamul lissa, it could benefit us in the exegesis of the ayah. And when we say, when some of the translators, some of the Mufassirin say, it, the ayah means he is a sign for the, for the hour, they're basing their opinion on this Shah's Qiraat. Because this is istishhad, this is istishhad that he, Jesus alayhi salam, is indeed the knowledge for the hour, the sign for the hour, and he does not have the knowledge of the hour himself. This is the istishad for that. Where, where is the problem? For tafsir, you can take the shah's qiraat, no problem. But saying that that shah's qiraat takes precedence over the mutawatir qiraat, the mutawatir qiraat are all matter of istihad, those diacritical marks put there, saying that ilmul lissa rendering the word as ilmul lissa are all a matter of istihad is total bonkers like you use the word in your uh, video jackass <laughs> that's a jackass's way of thinking you know <laughs> i'm sorry I, I don't mean anything by it ya sheikh please i'm not trying to disrespect you or anything um, <laughs> Uh, I really laughed out loud when I listened to Sheikh Imran Hussain using that word jackass, jackass, it's jackass. Um, so, <laughs> so really, um, let's not make this a matter of life and death. Let's uh, look at this scholarly and academically. Let's try to understand what I'm saying, where I'm coming from. And if you want scholarly references, on the things that I have said, please download my research paper. It is available on my website. I have given all the references and everything. We can only say, can't make anyone do anything on gunpoint, obviously, and everyone has a right to her or his own opinion, right? So let's not make this a matter of life and death, but this is definitely a deviance. This is a dire deviance and a dire mistake that Sheikh Imran Hussain has made. I hope you guys learned something from today's uh, podcast. If there are any questions, please hit me in the comment section or on Facebook. You guys hit me a lot on Facebook Messenger. I don't know why all those people who message me, I don't know why they don't post comments publicly. I don't know, maybe they have reservations or something. So anyways... At least give it a thumbs up if you liked this podcast. 
uh, that helps a lot in anashr uh, tawziya in in propagating the content across youtube and please subscribe to the channel if uh, you haven't yet and thank you very much for staying with me for so long i hope you guys enjoyed it assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh